Every eight hours in Africa, a rhino is poached. The reality is that this mother, Mara, could quickly become one of the three rhinos killed a day, making her a mere statistic in the rhino poaching crisis. Her calf would be orphaned and cannot survive in the wild on its own. One rhino um, came to us and the vets said, she's probably not gonna make it. She was, she'd been hit with a, an ax 23 times. Um, she, you could see the ax marks in the top of her head. Um, you could see her brain. Last year, over 1,200 rhinos were poached for their horns. This year to date, in July of 2015, almost 700 have been poached. Mara could easily be added to this figure. These rhinos are brutalized so that poachers can saw off their horns and part of their face, oftentimes while they are still alive. The horns are then sent to Asia to help satisfy an insatiable demand. Sadly, the statistics don't count rhinos that survive that might die, die later, and the orphans aren't count, counted either, they don't make it. So the statistics are much higher. It's probably about 20% higher than the actual numbers. These numbers are spurred by the demand for rhino horn in Asia. Consumer markets are highest in Vietnam and China, with the demand increasing drastically every year. The following footage from a hidden camera shows rhino horns being sold illegally from the back of a tailor shop. The vendors will try to close sales by using fake statistics about the curative values of rhino horn. Rhino horn has been scientifically proven to have no medicinal benefit. It is made of keratin, much like our fingernails. Here in East Asia, rhino horn is purchased for use in traditional medicine as trophies or bought as a status symbol. It is falsely believed to be able to cure cancer, hangovers, and a variety of other ailments. At its current market price, it is double the value of gold. This hidden camera shows the permits the vendor received to hunt the rhino. However, the paper forbids him from portioning and selling the horn. You know, as, as the, the Vietnamese and the Chinese and Southeast Asians have become more and more affluent and have more money to spend, it's, it's only likely to, to increase. The correlation of, of this poaching that correlates with the demand, that correlates with the economic growth in Southeast Asia, fundamental. And many people say, ask, why is this happening? It's, it's lifestyle that comes from affluent younger people. The more I read, the more I understand that the biggest driver of demand is lifestyle. Although the demand in Asia needs to be severely reduced, drastic measures must also be taken at the source of the poaching crisis. This is a political battle. We're not going to win it on the ground here with machine guns. Killing poachers is not the answer to saving another species. You don't kill one species to save another species. You know, when you're talking valuing human life over animal life, it's silly. This needs to be fought at a political level, at an international level. Historically, uh, up to 8,000 a rhino a year were being killed across Africa, uh, across various range states. Those range states, a lot of those range states, don't have rhino anymore. What we do have is a concentration of rhino and an opportunity to reassess what has worked in the past, uh, what hasn't worked in the past, why things haven't worked in the past, and how are we going to take this forward. There is no silver bullet in this war. Uh, these are all tools in the box that we, that we, we must have and it's, a, it's, it's going to take a continuously evolving uh, use of the tools that we have because as quick as we develop something that's very useful and very good and has, a, has an effect straight away, uh, our enemy is also uh, advancing and developing new tactics to circumvent uh, the systems that we're putting in place. Make the court at Skakuza a permanent court and everybody that transgressed in, in this park goes to that court where you have experienced prosecutors and magistrates that understand the essence of the crime. You get no bail and the harshest possible sentences. It will be deterrent, there's no doubt. The, the victory of anti-poaching will occur in boardrooms where the right decisions are taken and courts where people are put away. The significance of wildlife conservation and the threat that they're facing, not just in Africa but globally, and that we have a moral obligation. To the youth out there, I would say don't ignore it. Don't let this generation be the generation 
that has allowed the big five to become the big four. If we don't do this in three to five years, we're already, we think, at break-even point in terms of population growth. Mara represents the dwindling rhino population. We cannot let the sun set on her. We need to raise awareness and stop the demand now, before it's too late. This is the rhino's last shot. Hey.